Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, so, uh, if you can hear me, can you please uh, type something in the chat box so that I, I know that you can uh, hear me well. Okay, cool. Uh, so, okay, hope you can see me as well. There's nothing to... Uh, See here much just me okay um so uh welcome to our first ever session of uh, potatoes and cabbages so before we uh kick start the uh the session uh, there are some things that we need to clear out uh so first things first what is this uh potatoes and cabbages is about so uh what we're trying to do here is that uh, we compare two cloud services with each other. Uh, when I when I say two cloud services, it I actually mean uh, two uh, two individual services inside those uh, cloud providers. So uh, we're not going to compare the entire AWS uh, service with the entire Google uh, service or any other cloud provider for that for that sake. So we are just comparing one particular uh, service with one particular service from another provider. So we thought of having uh, potatoes, cabbages, because we we are familiar with the term alavage the goa. So uh, uh, first thing we need to understand is that we are not going to say that this product is better than the other product. So that's our first uh, motto. So. Uh, one of the first things that I got when I posted it up on Facebook, my one of my colleagues said, uh, "This is a clear win for the cabbage because uh, two GDG guys are doing this uh, review." So uh, that's not the case. We are, we are trying what what we are trying to do is uh, find out uh, which areas is uh, our one product is good at, and which areas is it not good at, and. Uh, where where we need to we can apply. Uh, a particular service and uh, reap the best benefits out of it. So, uh, so having said that, we we try to explore all the possibilities, and uh, and mind you, when, when we uh, when we uh, roll uh, when we uh, proceed in in uh, stating that there is some uh, there are some features that are available in one service uh, and then or not available in one service, it doesn't actually mean it, it's not possible to do with that particular uh, provider. Say, if I tell you this is possible with uh, Google Cloud and this is not possible with AWS, it doesn't mean it, it is not entirely possible or impossible with AWS. It, it can, it could be achieved with using another service, bundling another, another service. What we mean is uh, it's not directly or simply possible. So uh, if you have questions on those kind of uh, fine points, please to ask away and we, we can verify them. Uh, and we might also be wrong. I mean, uh, there are new new things rolling out in both the clouds. So we have done our uh, basic research, but there may be things that we have missed. So if I say this is not possible in AWS, and if you know that for sure that it's not, uh, not true and it is possible, please do speak up. I mean, uh, we can learn a lot from you guys as well. So uh, having said that, let's proceed. So. Uh, uh, yeah, so in this uh, uh, potato and cabbage series, today we have chosen uh, uh, AWS Fargate and Google Cloud Run. So I think uh, Tarka uh, will be doing more uh, on this series with uh, different products, comparing different products and cloud providers solutions. And today uh, we'll be uh, going forward with these two. Um, and I'll be doing the cloud run, and Taraka will be at the potato for us today. He'll be doing uh, the AWS uh, target. And you will ask us, like, why we are comparing AWS Fargate and uh, the Google Cloud Run instead of uh, comparing uh, other products like AWS Lambda and Google uh, Functions. So to give a small idea on like uh, why we chose uh, these two will be the ones we'll be comparing. Uh, basically, uh, Lambda and Google Functions, they both are functions as services. And Fargate and Cloud, uh, Cloud Run, they are container as a services. So there's a clear cut difference. So 
uh, we can't compare Lambda with uh, Cloud Run because uh, fundamentally they are two different kind of products, even though they work in kind of the same way. So this is the this is the uh, the the reason we thought like we'd be comparing uh, Fargate with Google Cloud Run. So I think uh, Tarak, let's start with like going a bit into Google uh, into Fargate and let's discuss like what is the the thing we had to do when we want to use Fargate and I will be going on to Google Cloud Run. Cool, that'll work. Okay. Uh, so number one, AWS Fargate. So what is Fargate? Fargate is a uh, just a serverless compute engine. So uh, Fargate can be used uh, in two different uh, versions. I mean, two different uh, flavors. One is with uh, uh, Elastic Kubernetes Service, which is the Kubernetes offering by uh, AWS, and the other is the Elastic Container Service. So uh, what we are doing today is uh, run run Fargate on top of uh, ECS or Elastic Container Service because it's uh, far more relatable to uh, Cloud Run, and uh, we'll be uh, doing our uh, deployments on ECS. So uh, why do we need to use something like Fargate? So the reason behind it is uh, we we uh, we choose a, a container as a service because we don't need to. Uh, go to the hassle of uh, running, managing all this compute infrastructure. Uh, and what we can do is we can uh, create our own containers and deploy it onto Fargate without uh, worrying about all the underlying, uh, managing all the underlying EC2 instances, or even uh, managing all those uh, logging uh, security and all those uh, other supportive functions. So that's one of the big, uh, uh, pros for going with uh, something like Fargate. Uh, by, uh, by, mean, uh, by, I, that, by that I mean like not going with EC2. Uh, this is why we would not go for something like Fargate. So uh, let's see uh, what are the components of... Uh, okay, uh, so uh, let's see what are the components of uh, how Fargate is uh, made i mean what are the internals of fargate so if you take uh, a fargate cluster uh, that is where all your uh, computing resources will be in so if you dig deeper uh, you will see that there are uh, inside that particular cluster it's divided into services so that is how we define our uh, resource so a service will run uh, uh, one of the definitions that we provide to uh, to that uh, uh, to that cluster so this task definition is like a uh, let's say a, a recipe of what we need to run inside this service so the, the service will spawn up new tasks inside uh, the 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 cluster according to this particular task definition the task definition contains all the information that uh, someone needs to, uh, that the cluster needs to spin up all the dockers and uh, how, uh, what type of uh, uh, images that they contain and say like uh, things like environment variables or uh, things like uh, parameters, all the parameters of the spawning of the docker. So those will be in the task definition. What the service does is take a task definition and uh, run the given number of tasks inside uh, inside itself. So you can pick and choose and say whether to run two tasks of this definition or whether to run one task of this particular definition. So how you serve traffic is uh, through an application load balancer. So the LB receives your traffic and you can direct it to this particular service and uh, tell the LB to uh, route a particular, uh, say a, a, a path or, or some kind of uh, port into this service so that you can serve your customers. So this is a very simple uh, overview of how uh, Fargate is uh, constructed. Uh, and uh, if you if we go to a small demonstration, I'll show you uh, how this is. Uh, okay. Uh, let me go through this.
Okay. Okay, you can see this. So this is my uh, ECS, uh, my one of my demo accounts. So uh, I just go through the uh, getting started uh, wizard. So we don't need to spend more time in it. So here you can see the same thing that I uh, told you in uh, in the slide. You got a container definition, which is a task definition. Uh, container definition inside a task definition which means uh, the task definition contains all the information of which container to spawn up and it is inside a service and again it is in that service is inside a cluster so uh, we just uh, pick one of these uh, sample uh, services let's see uh, oh, this one I think again this nginx one I just uh, choose this nginx one and uh, it will uh, automatically run this uh, task definition and uh, network modes uh, and all these uh, default values uh, just use them and uh, it will create this service nginx service so now we are at this particular level uh, and it will create all the security uh, uh, security groups and all that so i'll choose application load balancer for my traffic and let's say next uh, so it will create a new cluster. Uh, now we are at the cluster level. So it will create a VPC and all the subnets, all that, that is required to uh, run the underlying stuff. And we have uh, configured all that. We just press create. And it will start creating all the resources. Uh, so this is for the first run. Uh, so it, all, all of this gets created automatically or by the wizard. But if you need to customize anything or change how it goes, uh, sadly, you will have to go into every single one of these uh, configurations and do it manually. So uh, let's see why uh, it takes some time to pick up. Uh, one of the things that you need to uh, uh, focus on is uh, it, it has a lot of uh, small uh, components to bring up this particular service. So it's, uh, it's creating a VPC, two subnets, a security group, uh, a log group. Uh, uh, it's even doing cloud formation. Uh, it's uh, bringing up load balances. And uh, that's all that is, uh, this is all, all this is uh, additional stuff. Relate, not related to uh, target. Now, uh, after that, is uh, we come to uh, services, task definitions, and uh, clusters. So, we have a couple of more that stuff to uh, spawn up. Let's see. So, Tarika, basically, this is the wizard helping us to set up the initial cluster and uh, a kind of a test task uh, deployment, right? Exactly. Yes. So. Uh, I hope it runs. Wizard is uh, this slow. So you can imagine uh, doing this manually. Okay. Uh, shall we uh, move on or do we wait? What do we do? Oh, um, let's give it a one or two minutes. One minute. okay. Yeah. So I think like uh, one thing to note uh, is that uh, you are not defining the cluster sizes and everything uh, in the wizard, right? Exactly. So everything has been uh, put into default. So this is uh, just uh, what what has been uh, there for uh, like a demonstration type of thing. So I didn't even define which uh, what type of uh, image. I just chose a random image that that was there. So it's not very usable application, but just a demonstration. Shall we uh, just click on the task definition and see like how it looks like? Yeah, okay. Cool. So uh, I have created one of these uh, earlier. So this is just a version two. So this is the task definition. That's what uh, we said, uh, how it uh, defines what type of uh, service to run. So here we have a lot of uh, parameters, sorry, parameters here. So uh, uh, 
the most important part is here the container definition so it tells you to run an nginx uh, uh, container this is the particular image name and uh, what ports to map and uh, what type of mount points environment variables all these are here and uh, uh, these are this just the attributes so uh, this this is what tells the uh, cluster on how or how to uh, spawn up this uh, particular service so let's uh, go to this cluster and see okay we have the we have the service here so in that particular service i could see uh, its own uh, uh, settings just go to tasks and you could say okay we see that uh, particular task running so uh, this is the task that's running inside the uh, service so we see uh, this particular uh, docker image also running so we could view the logs uh, on uh, cloudwatch as well so uh, it's on a different type might, might not be able to see uh, sorry yes okay uh, so if i go to uh, ALBs, uh, okay. Okay. here's my load balancer and uh, so i have the load balancer here if i copy that and paste it here okay i have my service up so we've just uh, spawned our service uh, from fargate and uh, using this uh, load balancer i have created a http listener so here i have forwarded all my traffic towards this particular uh, task definition so you could see that uh, this particular target group so inside that target group uh, go to target group so here's the target group so it's uh, it's, uh, it's targeting this particular uh, target which is our target service so that's uh, that's the entire thing that set, that has been set up by the wizard so you might notice that there's a quite a bit of components that are outside Fargate that needs to be set up in order to uh, bring uh, traffic into our service. So I think that's a fair uh, demo of what we can do with Fargate. If we can have time, we have we'll, uh, like dig deeper. Shall we move on to the next service? Yeah. So I think Tarek, it's good that you knew like we are to look into these uh, information going around all the services in AWS, right? It's not in one place. We have to find the URL, we have to find the uh, load balance uh, information and stuff. Exactly, it's, it's not in one place. Bring it up, it's, it's in several places. So that's, uh, that's something that you need to know. So shall I uh, share the uh, slides with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Over to you. Right. So like uh, a quick intro to the uh, Google Cloud Run is like, it's a fully managed uh, serverless platform. So you don't have to manage or worry about anything. Basically, if you have a container or if you have a, a standard application that you can run it on Cloud Run with few clicks. And the, the good thing is like it's built on uh, uh, Knative, which is an open source project which runs on Kubernetes. So there are like perks coming with this uh, setup. I, I will come to that later. And the other good thing is like uh, with Knatives, we get something like uh, scale to zero, which means your application, if, if no one is using the application, it can scale down to zero. So no cost uh, occurs to you because there is no app running in the cloud. And when there's a request uh, coming to your application, it will spawn the container quickly and it will route the traffic to that content. So that is that how it goes. So I will come to that uh, in, in detail in the coming slides. And if you ask me how to use Google Cloud Run, it's very easy. It's 
it's like just give a container image and just run it or it give it just a source code repository like github repository or bitbucket repository and just run it so in the demo i'll show you how this is done and if we talk about the components of uh, cloud run as uh, as far as your concerns this is the component just the browser and this cloud uh, run container running on cloud run and there's nothing more that you have to be worried or concerned about everything is managed by google everything is tuned up and optimized by google standards and if your container is uh, running uh, in a good manner everything is going to be uh, perfect so uh, moving on to the demo i will uh, share my screen with you all You can see my screen, right? Yep, you can see that. All right. So now this is the Google Cloud Run. Uh, if you want to know how I came to uh, this page is uh, from the menu, you can find Google Cloud Run here under Compute. So this is the basic uh, view that, that you are getting uh, in, when you come to the Cloud Run in the first time. And I'll show you how to create a service. First, I will create a service with a Docker image uh, providing providing a Docker image. So I'm going to go to create service. And here I am going to get uh, our wizard and I'm getting, I'm giving a name, test one. And here you can choose uh, on which region we have to run the, our containers because Cloud Run is uh, region based and it is um, uh, load balance across the zones. So, uh, uh, if one source goes down, you get uh, other, other zones working on uh, your uh, application is served by other zones. And now this is the part that we, we have to give something uh, as an input. So here, what we have to give is a Google uh, container repository image URL. Uh, good thing is like they have already given a way to choose it from uh, container registry. Uh, so already, uh, uh, there's an image which I created a few minutes ago uh, uh, called Node, Node App. So I'm going to choose that image and you will see how the, the GCR, uh, GCR uh, URL is uh, shown to us. So this will be your uh, uh, Google uh, Container Registry URL and this will be your SHA. So uh, when we give this Docker image URL, and when we say which container port that we should be uh, connecting the web traffic, the, the traffic coming from the internet to this container, it's all done. So in this case, I'll be giving 300 because my application is running on port 300. Usually they recommend listening to an environment variable called port. Uh, if your application, you, if you can change your application to listen to this environment variable, uh, given as uh, port to your container, it's it's good. It's, it's a recommended way, but it's it doesn't matter. Like if you if you define your container port here, in most of the cases it will work. And yeah, so here you can choose like what kind of uh, memory and CPU that you need to your application, your container to be run. So you can choose uh, either from these given ones, or you can just create a custom value. Uh, and you can choose like up to four uh, virtual CPUs for your container image run. And this is like uh, the, the request timeout you had to provide. And this is one uh, important thing, like this defines how much uh, request one container should be handling. This is the way that uh, we are uh, giving, we are hinting the cloud run, like how our traffic, uh, how our scaling should be happening with uh, according to the traffic. So uh, I'll go forward and this is, uh, we are telling like what is the number of uh, containers we need to be running minimum. If you want it, it to scale to zero, then you can put, as, put, a, put zero as the value. So when there's no traffic uh, for your service, it will scale down to zero. So you are you're not paying for anything on those times. And, but if you, if you think like you need at least one container running to as quickly as to serve the request as quickly as possible, then you can put this put one or two as the minimum number of uh, instances. 
All right. So I'm going with the defaults. And here, this is the most important part. So if your application, uh, if your service is exposed to the internet, you can define it as allowed to all traffic. If you if this uh, service is something, uh, an internal service, which is accessed only uh, inside, inside your VPC, you can define them here. So let's say there's a service which called by another service in Cloud Run. So you can use uh, allow internal traffic only, these kind of settings. And here you, you can define like, whether the, the the request coming to the service cloud run service should be authenticated or not so if you want them authenticated you can quickly do it with the cloud uh, i am so everyone who has i am role they will be authenticated uh, by google for you and uh, every request uh, coming to your application your service will be uh, will be authorized request only so uh, i'm going with the uh, allow unauthenticated invocation because i want it to be accessible by everyone in the internet and it's just create so uh, what is happening under the hood is it is like creating uh, a k native task on the Kubernetes services and we are getting uh, our containers running uh, as a k native task yeah now it's all done so you can see here everything is in one view you can get all the logs from your container uh, here. Uh, let's go to the uh, application quickly. Yeah, this is my uh, small website, which I uh, uh, wrote. So um, now you can see all my uh, application logs coming to uh, my logs. And you can see uh, these are my uh, configurations my details and this is the important one which i wanted to show you this is your knative uh, yaml so everything google did under the hood they have defined it uh, in this knative yaml and they have given it out for us so in any case if you want to run this uh, away from google cloud run you can copy this one and you can run it on your own kubernetes cluster if you have knatives running on that kubernetes cluster so this is the this is one good thing I see in uh, Google Cloud Run because it's letting you to move away if you want to. Uh, so this is where you set up your um, uh, authentication uh, configuration, like which users can access uh, this service. So because we have allowed everyone to access this service, it's all users. Uh, they everyone is a Cloud Run invoker, but you don't have to worry about this if you are making. A standard website running on Google Cloud, Cloud Run, everything is defaulted to the, the best setups. And you can see a good dashboard here, everything, the request counts, latencies, and everything nicely uh, dashboarded in uh, this uh, view. And the other one is like, this is the versions. So let's say now I create another version uh, for my application, let's say my version two application. So I, I'll show you quickly create a version two. So I'm going to go with the same things, but I am going to, uh, let's say, define uh, extra environment, environment variable. I'm going to say version two. Right. <clears throat> so what happens is now we are creating another Docker container with uh, this uh, different setup. It could be a totally different Docker image. It could be a change in environment variables. Uh, it could be like anything that you can do with uh, Docker. And now you, you can see my uh, my running container has changed to this version two and traffic is 100% allocated to my version two. <laughs> the, the nice thing is like, let's say now you want uh, to deploy a version which you don't want all the traffic for your application to come to that new version at once. Let's say you won't go in a canary way. You, so you allow only 10% of your traffic to go to this new version and you monitor whether there are um, any uh, unseen problems, whether there is like huge rate of failures and huge uh, uh, list of uh, customers complaining uh, there is something wrong in your application so you can quickly roll back uh, to your earlier versions and if you see like okay everything is good you can uh, incrementally increase the traffic like 10 percent 20 percent 50 percent and then 100 percent so you can go it like that 
So basically, uh, this is like where you manage your service versions, your Docker versions, your deployment versions. And if you want to switch back to an older version, you can uh, do it uh, that way. So let's say now I want to roll back to uh, my older version. Like let's say I'll be keeping 10% in the new version and 90% uh, uh, in the older version. So uh, this is my uh, new one. So I'll, I'm telling that 10% should go to the uh, the new version and only 9% should go to my older version. Right. So let's say there are 100%, 100 uh, customers coming to your uh, website or like 100 requests coming. So only 10% will be served by this uh, latest version. And you can monitor here like if everything is good and uh, you can uh, see no uh, problems in latency. So you can quickly roll out uh, to newer versions. And uh, other nice thing with uh, Cloud Run I'll show you like uh, managing custom domain. So now you have a like bit of ugly URL uh, here, right? It's a, uh, it's a domain provided by Google. Uh, but the good thing is like uh, they are providing uh, SSL uh, certificates for us. So we don't have to pay extra for certificates if and uh, we don't have to do any configurations to get uh, these uh, certificates to our domains. So everything is uh, automatically configured for us. So your application, your service will be running on HTTPS uh, as a default. And here, if you want to uh, configure a domain name, you can do it from here. You can say, OK, this application will uh, be on this domain. And you can give a, a sub subdomain, let's say, API on this uh, domain. So let's say your application is example.com and you can say this service should be like api.example.com. So that's how it goes. So you can go through the process and uh, finally they will give you uh, DNS records you, so you can update in your DNS server. But this is uh, how you can quickly uh, uh, add a mapping to your uh, custom domains. So um, I think that's quickly, uh, that's basically the, uh, the setup. So I want to show you uh, also now how I created this uh, Docker image, how I push my Docker image to uh, Google Cloud, uh, Google Container Registry. So this, imagine this is your terminal, your bash on your machine. And uh, I, have a, uh, uh, I have my repository on uh, this terminal clone. And this is the command that you have to give uh, gcloud build submit and you give your uh, GCR repository name. So this uh, this comes from your uh, project name. You know, it's like the session demo one is my project name, project ID. And this is uh, some name which you like. So you can give any custom name to this one. <clears throat> so this is the easiest way of creating a Docker image with Google uh, Cloud. You can build uh, your Docker image on your machine and then push to GCR, or you can use, uh, this is a cloud build. You can use cloud build to build uh, Docker images on the cloud itself, because it's uh, easy in the long run, you can create a cloud build uh, as a CACD pipeline. So every time you uh, do a push to your repositories, it will uh, build a Docker image and it will uh, uh, make a deployment. So. Uh, one uh, uh, good thing is like Google uh, Cloud Run also uh, support in this uh, inside the Google Cloud Run. So I'll show you uh, quickly how to create a uh, service with the CI/CD plumbing. So I'm going to create uh, something called test two and same region. And here, instead of giving uh, the Docker image URL, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to set up a continuous deployment for this one. So here I'm using the cloud build and uh, they have integrated the cloud build uh, into cloud run uh, seamlessly. So I am going to choose my simple node application. And here you can choose uh, your uh, branches. It could be master or main or could it could be your 
uh, the release branches or production branch or anything you like. And what you have to really do is if your application in your source code, you have a Docker file, then you can define, okay, this is my Docker file. So Google will build a Docker file for you in cloud and it will deploy that application every time you push a change to uh, your repository. So it's completely seamless. Only thing that you have to do is push something to your uh, Git repo. Maybe it's uh, by a merge request or maybe directly pushed. Uh, it doesn't matter like because Google is handling everything in, under the hood and it will uh, pull uh, all the changes you just push to Git repo and it will build a Docker file. It will run it uh, as a new version in uh, Cloud Run. And if you don't have a Docker file, still you can use Google Cloud Run because they have given us uh, something called the build packs. So if your application is using a standard uh, way of uh, uh, running a web framework with Go, Node.js, Python, Java, or .NET, so they know like uh, how to uh, look into the repository and understand, okay, this is a Node.js application and I'll be using uh, npm run. Or if this is a Go command, I will be I will build this uh, Go build binary and I will run that. So they have uh, come up with this, uh, this nice set of build packs for each application. And they will be like uh, looking into your source code and they will uh, identify like how I can run it as a container uh, automatically. Uh, <clears throat> and if you like, you can uh, alter your ent 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 entry point. You can define for like, uh, if it's a GUnicorn application, you can define, okay, this is the command I want to run. If it's Java application, you can define this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, command I want to run. So for each uh, platform, each uh, framework, not JS, Python, uh, they have uh, these set of uh, commands, uh, default commands under the build pack uh, project. If you want to use uh, that uh, uh, automatic uh, configuration without worrying about running, writing a Docker file, you can use that one. Uh, so this is it, just uh, use that and then you can, uh, the, the rest is uh, like that, uh, usual. And you can uh, create a, a service in that way. So every time when you push it, your service is going to be updated. Hmm. All right, so I think Taraka, that's uh, basically it uh, for Cloud Run. Shall we move on with uh, our... Yeah, so that's a lot of services built into one uh, single, uh, single uh, tiny... Unit, right? Right. Everything yeah. is in one yeah, dash. In one place, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go forward with this. Uh, I think you need to stop sharing. All right. Okay. Cool. So... Can you see that? Okay. Why is mm -hmm. my 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 presentation is always smaller than yours, bigger? Not fair. Okay. Uh, so uh, so let's go for uh, reasons to have a uh, uh, go with potatoes or Fargate. So uh, I just saw uh, uh, you saw the differences between uh, how we set these things up and you uh, you saw what what particular services are uh, there are to support this uh, Fargate or Cloud Run. So uh, in Fargate, you, uh, you have more fine grained control over the uh, container resources, uh, but the control is not built up in one single place like uh, Melinda showed in in Google Cloud Run. But in uh, AWS, your control is in uh, several different places that you can. Uh, fine tune and uh, find out uh, how to uh, adjust and uh, like gear it to your requirement. So uh, number one reason to uh, go with Fargate would be the ability to run multiple containers in, 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 in one service. So uh, if you have something like a sidecar or some supportive uh, uh, Docker that, that needs to be run with your service or application, you can do that with Fargate. Uh, that is not possible in Cloud Run. So you can run uh, uh, a number of uh, containers uh, in parallel in one uh, one 
uh, task definition. So like uh, just like a pod in, in Kubernetes. So and then you then have the uh, control of uh, directing your traffic using path sports or header based uh, routing. So let's say if you uh, like uh, if some client requests uh, an endpoint, let's say slash sign up, uh, you can direct it to a different uh, a different uh, target group. Or if he says uh, login, you can uh, di uh, direct it to another different uh, service. So that way you can control how how things work. So if you have a, let's say something like a mobile application that that you could send a version number of that particular mobile application in a header, you could direct that traffic uh, into different uh, let's say different uh, applications. So that kind of uh, control is there for you to uh, fine tune your service and you can uh, you can control the scaling policy so how does it scale uh, with the traffic so you can uh, you can either say scale it with this particular uh, matrix let's say cpu uh, the number of uh, amount of cpu that you uh, that is being consumed and auto scale my service uh, with and run more tasks uh, inside this particular service or you can limit it and you can say okay this is the number of uh, tasks that i can say uh, run uh, just run with uh, say five instances of my particular task so that's it and you can serve your traffic using that uh, only that uh, five instances and uh, and then you have the ability to run your services or your tasks as a cron job so you can schedule your work inside uh, fargate Let's say every every night at 12 or 1 a.m. you can uh, spawn your containers and do some uh, housekeeping or do some uh, say uh, log uh, compression or something like anything you can imagine. So you can uh, run it as a cron job. So that's one of the uh, good things in in Fargate. So and uh, uh, there are minor perks. We need to mention that you uh, in in Google Cloud Run there's a recommendation to run. Uh, your uh, containers in a particular port, uh, the the environment variable. Uh, I think it's port, right? So in Fargate, you don't need to do that. It's like you sub you can uh, define whatever port you can you need. So that's a minor perk you have. So you don't need to worry about whether whether something will go wrong if I change the port. You can run it in any port, and you can uh, tell the service to uh, serve it in this particular port. So those are the uh, good things about uh, Fargate. So how does it go with run? Um, change the slide if you can. Yeah, thank you. So um, as you saw in, in, in the demo, like deploying a service with uh, Cloud Run is very quick. You just have to give the container image and you can define the RAM and CPU you want and you can define how much uh, time the rest request time and uh, the concurrency limit so that's that's only thing that you have to con uh, give like <clears throat> not like in uh, fargate like in the in the startup wizard uh, uh, it was uh, just few clicks but if you actually want to deploy your application you had to like give a lot of configurations nuts and bolts to uh, uh, switch on and off so in cloud run the, the the best thing is like you are getting a lot of things uh, built for you automatically by google like uh, even the cicd setup from like the pushing to git and getting it deployed automatically it's done for you uh, you just have had to uh, choose your git repository and choose the the branch you want to be used and the the fa file path of the docker file or whether it's a not if it's a not js application but you you don't have a docker file it is all automatically done for you so there are a lot of things that google is handling on behalf of you which is like like very good thing uh if you're a starter and you are you don't have a lot of experience with uh, the whole uh, sort of services and applications uh in that cloud provider and uh, as i mentioned like we are getting you are getting an HTTPS endpoint automatically, so you don't have to like in AWS uh, go to ACM and buy a ACM certificate and configure it to the load balancer by yourself. 
so it's automatically done for you. And even when you map um, domain uh, name, you don't have to go to the route 53 and uh, map it there and map it your load balance URL. You don't have to do do any of this because it's automatically done for you. You just you just had to have to give the domain name that you want to be mapped to this particular service. Um, and like uh, other, the best thing I think is like uh, the having the ability to scale to zero, which uh, cuts down the cost a lot, <clears throat> because uh, most of our applications uh, in uh, in the beginning they don't get a lot of traffic, and there are times in, like if, if your traffic is targeting one region that region would be uh, totally sleeping on uh, the night time. So you, your services will scale down to zero and you won't get any cost incurred uh, to running your services on the cloud. And let's say now in AWS, if you get a, if you run, if you run a task, you have to run at least one task and that will be running on, let's say uh, a five to eight uh, megabyte RAM. Uh, uh, machine so you are paying for that machine always but in uh, google um, uh, cloud run you are not paying for the infrastructure you are just paying for the number of requests so if there's a if there is a container running in and if it is not getting any request or at least once or one request or two requests for an hour so the cost you have to pay is like extremely low you are not paying for the whole instance hours you're just paying per request so in that case, if uh, application is like uh, not getting a huge uh, a number of requests uh, on some time on some uh, time time some time uh, zones, so you can leverage that uh, benefit also. And other one is like like I showed you, uh, it's a kind of a cloud uh, provider agnostic because they already give you the. Um, can it you configuration so if if you think like google cloud run uh, is not the product for you you can quickly get the uh, the cloud can it you configuration out of uh, cloud run and you can have your own kubernetes cluster or maybe on gcp itself or maybe on different uh, cloud provider or maybe or your in-house uh, kubernetes cluster and you can use that uh, can it you uh, configuration to run uh, your containers on um, that kubernetes cluster like you uh, ran them on Google Cloud Run. And the other thing is like you are getting a lot of uh, cool stuff like uh, traffic splitting, like I showed you different versions. And one thing I think I didn't show you is like, uh, let's say <clears throat> you have two versions. Usually, uh, for example, we have uh, version one, one version two, and version three of uh, the same service. Let's say the user service, we have version one user service, version two user service, and we'll be like eventually uh, decommissioning the version one. So in that case, what you can do is you can map different domains to each version. So this container will be, we will tell, <coughs> okay, it's v1 api example.com. This is v2 exam api example.com. <coughs> Sorry. And the live version, we can tell it's api.example.com. So it, it you can like do these kind of uh, things also, and you can define how much traffic should go to each and every services. So there are a lot of things that you can leverage from Google Cloud Run, which uh, needs uh, some additional work from your side if it's on uh, uh, ECS Fargate. And uh, like, uh, you have to install some uh, applications on your uh, uh, setup also if, if you sometimes go to that kind of setup in uh, other providers. <clears throat> and uh, like I mentioned, the pricing model is really good because you are not paying for the, the instance hours or the bandwidth use. You are paying just for uh, the, the number of requests and that uh, time that uh, RAM and CPU use on those times that the request is processed. So uh, compared to uh, AWS, I think pricing model is like really good in uh, Cloud Run. Uh, I think uh, that those are like few important uh, uh, reasons which I feel uh, that is uh, which Google Cloud Run has advantage over uh, AWS Vagate. Uh, Tarek, over to you. Okay, uh, so uh, those are the good stuff. So let's see uh, what problems we saw in, in using uh, Fargate. So uh, 
number one is uh, the the complexity so you saw how how many uh, how many services that got spawned uh, in addition to the the ecs there were load balances there were security groups and task definitions all this uh, all this is really complex it's not really easy like uh, the cloud run so if uh, only the wizard was simple I, let's say if we wanted to run a second version of that particular uh, particular software we needed to go manually and uh, change everything and if we needed to spawn up another service of our on our own uh, it takes a lot of time i mean you had to set set everything up from uh, a task definition and then you had to set up the services if you are setting up an entirely new uh, cluster you have to do the cluster and uh, maybe the vpcs and manage the security groups and uh, assign them to every single position and then uh, assign the load balancer to that particular service to those things take a lot of time i mean uh, the the startup the the time from uh, starting up the the setting up process the provisioning process to the time that you are starting to serve customers is a it's a large uh, there's a large gap if you if you if you do it uh, manually so uh, and and the learning curve also right yes and the, and the learning curve so the, when, when i was starting to use fargate uh, it took a lot of time for me to like i set it up and i i i wait there scratching my head why is why is this traffic not reaching my service so then i find out okay this particular uh, security group is not working or this particular target group is not reaching my traffic or or there are other internal problems that you need to map uh, if you are accessing things like uh, let's say dynamo dd or things like s3 you have to figure out how to add uh, more uh, like uh, internal routing inside uh, fargate and inside aws to link those services into fargate so those are the things that i saw that are the real pain points in 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 using aws you can actually fine tune everything but you have to tune everything so uh, there are no defaults nobody has thought it before you they have given you the uh, the uh, independence to tune it up but there's the hassle of tuning it up so that's there uh, it's a big uh, big hassle to set the service up but once you set it up you know what you're doing uh, it, it 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 gets faster but still you have to do some certain amount of work and then uh, like Vilnu said, uh, there's no free SSL uh, or free uh, uh, HTTPS in, in Fargate or uh, in the ALB. So your ALB default traffic would be just HTTP. So what you will have to do is you will have to uh, uh, buy your own dom bring, bring your own domain and uh, park it inside uh, AWS and use it there uh, and uh, either generate a, a certificate from uh, outside or generate it with, uh, with AWS uh, with a small cost and then uh, use it. But the, but with Google, you get a free SSL certificate. So that's one of the uh, big disadvantages because uh, we don't get uh, get a, from the start, we don't get that security. So we will have to work some uh, more into getting that uh, security into it. So uh, that's one of the uh, couple of things that I saw that are problems in, in Target. So. Right. So when when we come to the cloud run, I think the biggest problem with cloud run is actually uh, not uh, being able to run sidecar. So you can only run one container for one service. If you want to run another container, like let's say like in Kubernetes, you can run two or three containers in in a pod, right? But with the cloud run, uh, they they have still they still haven't given that uh, capability. So one service will be, will be only one container so if you want to run a, a log, logging uh, sidecar or something a cache a, a cache container like a redis server or something uh, you, you can't do that uh, yet with cloud run <clears throat> and uh, the control over the things uh, everything like happen uh, behind the curtain so google is handling everything you can't manage the scaling policies you can't uh, add any kind of schedule scaling and um, so there are a lot of things uh, you can do with uh, Fargate, which you can't do with uh, Cloud Run because uh, Google uh, has a given set of uh, 
uh, mechanisms and we they are not give, allowing us to customize anything so i think uh, having not having uh, mm, the capability to define a scaling policy is one one big disadvantage because sometimes we define different kind of uh, scaling policies depending on our application behavior uh, looking at our traffic patterns and stuff but uh, the only thing we can uh, 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 like uh, turn on and uh, off is like just number of requests uh, a container can handle in Google Cloud Run. I think that is that is like one big disadvantage when it comes to Cloud Run. Okay, uh, I think that's about it uh, from our side. So uh, if you have any questions or any concerns, uh, if you think we can answer them, please uh, pass it up into the messages or ask it away. Targa, do you have any questions for me? Uh, not something that I can figure can, out. Can, so, uh, can, you, can you show us like uh, uh, how we see it is, how we see uh, like how to create a new uh, version of uh, the service you just deployed with Fage? We, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, I'll share this. So now go to the uh, the cluster that we just created, and we have the uh, so we have the task definitions. This is the task definition that runs uh, that particular service that I created. So you see these uh, small version numbers. So these are the revisions that has been created uh, for this particular task. So I'm going to uh, uh, click this. And if I say create new revision, I'll go to this uh, particular task definition editing mode. So I can change anything in this particular task dev. And you see the uh, Nginx container here. Say if I uh, have a, a certain version of Nginx that, has, that is being uh, popping up, let's say, uh, is it how it should go? Again, okay. Uh, so, and then uh, I can uh, change whatever port mappings that has been going on, or I can add new, uh, say, environment variables, things like that. Where is that? Okay. Uh, yeah. So I can change it and. Uh, uh, yeah, something cool that we uh, didn't show is uh, secrets. You can uh, actually take uh, values uh, from secrets and uh, paste them here. If you have something like a uh, database password, uh, you can just uh, put it into uh, Amazon Secrets and put the AR in here. You can, it will uh, pull it from, uh, from that value. So you can uh, uh, take that from there or uh, you can if it is I, I don't recommend this putting passwords here so uh, that's the recommended method. so it's a uh, if you do these changes and uh, once you have figured out everything you can uh, click update and it will just create a uh, uh, it will change the uh, container definition and then uh, we can uh, let's say create it will uh, create a new task definition here so uh, and then uh, in order to run this this particular task definition what we'll have to do is we have to go to clusters select the cluster and select the service and click update and then change the revision here to the latest revision and you can either skip to review or i'll go to uh, check every step and uh, you can 
check everything if everything is in order. Uh, this is where you configure the uh, scaling. Let's say uh, if you want to auto scale, uh, if you uh, want to auto scale, define a minimum number. Let's say uh, one uh, and maximum number. Let's say ten, and you can either uh, add a scaling policy. Let's say uh, uh, let's say ten percent, something like that. So you can save, and then uh, you could update this service, and then this particular service will start running this uh, new uh, task definition that, that I just created, and it will apply the changes that I did into this uh, particular service. So that's the kind of steps you have to follow. There's a lot of moving parts here. So uh, if you wanted to put another service here, just go to create and start uh, from uh, select the launch type as target and start creating that particular service using a task definition, either this particular task definition or another task definition that you have created and create this particular uh, service from scratch. So th that is why I said there's a lot of work you have to do uh, to uh, set it up. Yeah, and you you, sh you had to have the knowledge of like where to do this and where to put this and where to configure this kind of knowledge. Exactly, also. exactly. You have to fiddle with it and learn a lot of things. There are some things that you have to just uh, <laughs> uh, do a couple of times and figure out why it's happening, what it's doing. So we have a question. Uh, uh, Disha asks, uh, uh, so when a, whenever a new Google Run instance is made, does it have delay compared to Amazon's or is, and is it significant? I think uh, he's asking for the first, uh, first ever request that comes after you have scales zero. So like it, it, what it takes is like the container startup time. So if there is a, like it depends on your application, right? If your application is starting very quickly, it will uh, run quickly. But now let's say there's a one container running already, so it can handle a lot of requests. So in, in, in my default, I said 80 requests per container. So what, what Google will do is it will like uh, route uh, it requests up to that uh, container, and when it sees like it's getting a lot of requests, it will uh, spawn new instances automatically before it reaches that AD limit. So <clears throat> everything is by uh, is like uh, in Google's uh, um, um, algorithms, they have uh, identified okay, this is how we should scale this application, and they are handling it that way. But if you are worried about that when scaling from zero to one, yes, so there is no application to, uh, there's no container to handle your first request that comes to your uh, application, your service. So that will uh, have that uh, container startup time delay. So if, if your application is like a, a heavy application which take a lot of time to spawn up, and if you think like uh, keeping the users uh, until the application, the container starts uh, is not good, uh, depending on your service. So you can define the minimum as one. So one container will be running all the time and it will be handling uh, your request. Okay, there's this uh, machine learning geek asking a question. Do these services support GPUs and other hardware accelerations like TPUs? Uh, guy's name is Keshan Sodiman. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I think Keshan, it's uh, not uh, your cup of tea <laughs> for machine learning stuff. Yeah, I don't think uh, Fargate also has uh, that particular type of uh, acceleration that that uh, that can handle it. Uh, I don't I, I don't I don't see uh, this type of service uh, getting hand in hand with uh, something like machine learning, right? This is this is not not something that you could uh, put into that particular. Uh, uh, line of events you you can actually like do a uh, customization in both ECS and cloud run but they are not straightforward like um, yeah 
in in uh, cloud run actually like uh, it's not just for web service request usually um, doing batch jobs and machine learning kind of tasks also where cloud run is supported and you can r run long running tasks on cloud run but um, uh, you have to like do different kind of configurations uh, here and there to like if you want uh, like say gpu and tpu it's a bit uh, different said in the beginning that it it's not that it's not possible it's possible but it's it's not the best way to do it right <clears throat> so any more questions I think like uh, while we waiting for a question, uh, I, I can add up uh, some more into Adish's uh, question. So <clears throat> in ECS, like uh, in ECS and both uh, Cloud Run, we have uh, that uh, moment like our, let's say in ECS, it's the instance, right? So our instance, uh, it's uh, fully occupied by a lot of requests and there's a, a delay until uh, there's a new uh, instance uh, for your service uh, spawned up in your cluster. Uh, but in uh, Cloud Run, I think the instances, they are using shared instances. So uh, it's uh, just the time which takes to run the container. Uh, but in ECS case, I think your instances runs only your container. So it takes time to spawn a new instance in your cluster and run the container. So in, in uh, uh, ECS, uh, there's uh, a bit more delay, but uh, because in ECS you can't uh, go uh, down to zero, uh, you are like paying all the time. So uh, that's why you are, you are not getting uh, uh, the first request delay in uh, ECS, but you are paying a price for that. Um, Melinda wants to know how this uh, work with CI/CD pipelines and how how we can select a profile like uh, Dev QA and Live. So, uh, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah. So uh, you you can like uh, like I I think like in in Spring Boot like applications you are passing the profile uh, from n one variables right. So you can do the same thing uh, with uh, Cloud Run. If, if you are using uh, your own CSED pipeline, let's say Jenkins or GitLab or GitHub CSED, you can uh, run, use the uh, uh, CLI command to run an application on Google Cloud Run. It's one app, one command, just uh, give uh, VG Cloud uh, run and uh, the configurations, uh, your Docker image name and version uh, name maybe, and your environment variable. So it's like very quick uh, to configure in CSED or uh, all kind of CICD platforms. And if we want to use Google Cloud Build, uh, like if, if you don't have a CICD server of your own, you can do the same with the Google Cloud Build. And you can uh, identify like how I'm going to uh, define uh, these, these and, and uh, uh, profile environments. And you can configure it that way in Google Cloud Build. Uh, pretty much the same. You use uh, Amazon's own uh, code build and uh, code deploy. You can uh, build and deploy your service using any uh, CSED service that you uh, use. So uh, I personally use, uh, I actually don't go to the extent of uh, deploying the task definition and uh, running the service. But uh, what, I, what I usually do is I build the service and deploy it into the ECR and I decide which uh, which particular service to run uh, on uh, which particular uh, cluster. I, I do that manually. So uh, uh, you can actually uh, like define two particular, uh, two or three particular task definitions for your different uh, environments, Dev QA and Live, and uh, use those in different clusters. Or you can uh, do the same that you said. You can uh, provide an environment variable and use that environment variable to uh, differentiate between uh, your environments. I think we have reached our time 
frame so it's like 8:45 here we've been running for an hour so if there are no other questions we can uh, wrap it up yeah yep. all right yeah okay so uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us uh, today with uh, potatoes and cabbages so uh, we hope to continue this for uh, let's say either for at least one more uh, service and see how it goes and then we'll uh, we'll find out uh, we'll try to get some feedback from you guys whether you like it or how how do you want it to change uh, what kind of services you want to compare if you want it to continue so if you have any feedback please do leave some feedback uh, on any of our channels so we can like evaluate ourselves and see what we can do about it in the future so uh, thank you very much and good night to everyone Good night, Earth. Thanks for joining, everyone.